Hello again and welcome to the 140k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I'd like to say a big thank you to Kevin Pike for sending us some awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard Cadian 8th Army. I've said it once and I've said it again, a well done classic Cadian 8th colour scheme looks absolutely fantastic. And Kevin, you have definitely managed to achieve that effect. So thank you very much for sending in these awesome pictures. If anyone else has got any cool pictures that wants me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. Now today, guys, we're going to be looking at uh, an interesting argument. We're going to be looking at the plasma gun versus the grenade launcher. Now, both these weapons are staples of an 8th edition Imperial Guard list. And, to be honest, it's not a case of either or, it's a case of both. But what's important to know as a Guard Commander is where these weapons are best utilised. Where can you use them to get the most bang for your buck, to, to, get, to get them to be most effective? So we'll take a look at both weapons individually, what their stats are and how much you pay for them points-wise. But also, real life-wise, um, how, easy, how easy they are to get your hands on. So we'll start off with the plasma gun. Now the plasma gun, it costs 7 points on a regular Blister Skill 4 Plus model, but costs 11 points on a Blister Skill 3 Plus model. Okay, so it has two different point costs. Now, it is strength 7, AP minus 3, 1 damage, but it has the option to be overcharged, where it's strength 8, AP minus 3, 2 damage, but if you roll a 1 to hit, then the, the bearer is slain. No matter how many wounds he has, the bearer is slain. Now, this is, it's, it's a good weapon. It's a good weapon, but it is a little pricey, okay, especially on ballistic skill 3 plus models. Now the reason that um, you pay more points for a model that, uh, well this is GW's argument, it used to be where it cost 7 points to put it on anyone at the beginning of 8th, but it got FAQ'd, it got changed in the guard codex. And the reason being is because people were able to, you know, guard able to spam plasma really effectively. You were able to deep strike down loads of styles and sign command squads and, um, and command squads and just in general, you're able to get a lot of plasma into rapid fire range very easily and um, it was it's very very powerful but on ballistic skill 3 plus models so that's the plasma gun now the grenade launcher is only three points so bear that in mind you can get two grenade launchers for every plasma gun and but with but with one point left over to spare so for every plasma gun you can get two grenade launchers and a bolter for a sergeant which is you know that's that's not uh, that's not something to be to be overlooked now the grenade launcher also has two firing modes it has frag and crack frag mode is one i i personally often overlook but i've started to really pay it a bit more attention is it's d6 shot so it's a little random but it's strength three ap mass nothing damage one essentially d6 las gun shots now crack is where it gets a little bit more tasty and where the comparison with plasma starts coming in crack grenades are used to, uh, to crack open tanks and they are strength six so a little bit less than the plasma gun ap minus one so again not as not ap minus three and D3 damage, so an average of two, but with that potential to get three damage, but also with that potential to get one damage. So they're a lot more random. So I guess it is a case of you get what you pay for. You know, Plasma Gun, you're paying that premium point, but you are getting a very good weapon. The Grenade Launcher is much cheaper, but is less... You know, it is, it is not as good. Now, in the past, grenade launchers used to be five points, and therefore there was no contention. It was always plasma all the way. Now the three points, genuinely, they are equal to grenade launchers. Point for point, they're equal to, they're, sorry, they're equal to plasma guns. Point for point. Now, 
We're, for, for now, we're going to focus on the crack mode. The frag mode is, is, is great, but for now, we're going to focus on the crack mode because both these weapons are good. For, we're looking at their anti-tank capability, essentially. Or they're almost their anti-primaris capability because those, those things are on the rise. Everyone and their mum is cramming primaris into their list these days. Um, now, the plasma gun is a rapid fire weapon, whereas the grenade launcher is an assault weapon. Both have 24 inch range, and a grenade launcher gets one shot at 24 inch range, but at 12 inch range it also only gets one shot, whereas the plasma gun gets one shot at 24 inch range, but when it's in half range it gets two shots because rapid fire one. So, what does this mean? Well, because you're paying premium points for your plasma gun, you really want to be getting the most out of it, and therefore you want to be getting it into rapid fire range. You do. Now, whether that is deep striking it in uh, via Scions, whether that is outflanking it via Talan or the, Dal the, the Relic Dagger of Tusaka, the point is, or, or dr jumping out of a Chimera and, uh, and rapid firing something, or jumping out of a Valkyrie, the point is you want to be getting up close and personal with the Plasma Gun. And also, bear in mind that typically, if you don't kill the target, you're, you know, if you, uh, if you don't kill what you're shooting at, then your guardsmen are pretty flimsy. Whatever shoots back is probably going to clear them off. Now, even if you do kill the target you're going to kill, that you intended to, let's say you drop down a couple of uh, Scion Command Squads, four plasma on each one, it's kind of expensive. Got that officer in there with them. It's a little 205 plasma death bundle, to the five points. And you kill what you're going to kill. You take out that key enemy unit. The enemy is going to kill your guys back. So suicide plasma is a, is a real tactic. But you have to make sure you get your investment worth. You have to make sure that high value target goes down. Um, so that is that is the traditional way of using plasma. And to be honest, it's one of the most powerful ways of using it. Um, the grenade launcher, on the other hand... If you look at its stats, it doesn't matter if you're within 24 inch range or you're within one inch range. It's getting that one crack grenade shot. So in a way, the grenade launcher, whilst it is a assault weapon, it's not really you're not assaulting with it. You are want you you kind of want to be using it to sit back and plink at the enemy. You want to be you want to be using it to supplement your other heavy weapon firepower and it's why traditionally and to this day the grenade launcher auto cannon combo stands both weapons have got decent strength decent punch decent damage so what does this mean well you want to be putting grenade launchers typically in those squads that are go that you have designated on the battlefield role and obviously no plans fives the enemy but that you that you plan to sit back and your your half the table or the midfield holding an objective and providing fire support okay these are units which are going to be slinging shots at the enemy they won't necessarily be doing the main punch the main damage but they will be adding that support fire they'll be chipping wounds off that's where the grenade launcher typically lies. On the flip side, you know, you also can use grenade launchers to add a little bit of cheap, nasty muscle to your assault elements. Uh, for example, three grenade launchers on a special weapon squad is a cheap way of adding some extra crack grenades into your army. And if the and if the and typically the special weapon that a three grenade launch special weapon squad will be a kind of low priority for your opponent to deal with i mean it's a 31 point unit it's a, no not 31 uh 33 sorry it's a 33 point unit uh that can just launch from the safety of 24 inch range from cover can just launch from crack grenades no worries it, but it's it's quite a concentrated amount of firepower likewise you can do the same with a, a regular old guard command squad these things can't deep strike in you know your special weapon squad can't deep strike in your uh your guard command squad can't deep strike in but they can provide fire support 
easily from a distance. And the best way to do that, to keep it cheap and nasty, four grenade launchers in a command squad. Again, it's not going to be a top priority of your opponent. You know, if you're taking a, uh, a mixed guard list, and you've got some uh, artillery maybe, you know, looking at the picture up now, or you've got some tanks, your opponent is going to want to remove those obvious threats first. But in the meantime, whilst he's trying to remove those obvious threats, your grenade launchers are constantly doing work, constantly just taking chunks out of something. Not big chunks, maybe just little, maybe little, uh, little bites, little here. You know, blow an armor plate off there, you know, kill a marine here. But they're consistently doing that damage. I mean, a guard command squad with three grenade launchers only has two. Uh, it's a 30, what, 36 point unit? It only really has to kill, like, what, a couple of Primaris? Roughly, give or take a few points. It only has to kill a couple of Primaris to get its points back. It can do that relatively easily. I mean, four. Think about a command squad. A KD, you know, KD eight, for example. You've got a command squad. Four guys with grenade launchers hitting on threes, rerolling ones. You've got a good chance you're going to hit with all those shots. Then at strength six, you've got a good chance you're going to wound with three of those. You know, let's say between those two, you're going to you're going to get three wounds. Now your opponent, if he's a Primaris, he's got a four up save. Now, whether the, the luck might go with you, the luck might go against you, but let's say the luck goes with you, you kill two Primaris, you know, then that command squad in one round has got its points back. Anything it does after that is, is bonus. So that's where you want to be looking at putting your grenade launchers in your, your cheap additional fire support units. The, the ones that are foot slogging it, not necessarily foot slogging across the board, but defending your objectives adding fire support okay and the reason why grenade launchers work so well is it's kind of the same reasons why people like putting mortars and auto cannons in the heavy weapon squads they're concentrated firepower for a low price point but they are relatively easy to kill so you don't want to be putting like las cannons in your heavy weapon squad simply because the opponent can kill them quite easily and then you've lost a, a lot of points whereas auto cannons they're really cheap mortars they're really cheap same thing applies to your grenade launcher fire support squads. If they die, they die. So what? It wasn't a big deal. Who cares? And especially approaching this from a pure infantry standpoint, you know, once you have uh, you know, um, spent your 18 troop slots on your 18 infantry squads and then your three veteran squads, uh, you you are looking to fill to fill up numbers at that point. The way you do that is with special weapon squads and and with command squads. Now, speaking of veterans, a lot of people don't like veteran squads. They, they struggle to utilize them. A very cheap but effective veteran squad is one where you have three grenade launchers and a missile launcher. And if you really want to spring for it, a bolt on the sergeant. Because veterans will, you know, struggle to, they don't deep strike in, so they either have to go in a chimera, but that makes them different. If you're making a Foot veteran squad, three grenade launchers, a missile launcher, and a bolter. That's typically where you want to be looking. Now, on the flip side again, veterans with plasma, they're very expensive, but they deliver a solid punch. Okay, so vet, so grenade launchers. So just before we cl finish on grenade launchers, okay. Grenade launchers are wanted to sit in squads which are doing fire support, typically infantry squads with grenade launchers and auto cannons, special weapon squads, and regular Imperial Guard command squads. That's where you'll find and foot veterans. That's where your grenade launchers really want to be uh, want to be utilised. Your plasma guns want to be utilised on hard hitting, punching, aggressive assault and in inverted commas. By assault, I don't mean close combat. I just mean getting the opponent's face units. That's where you want your plasma. We're talking drop scions. We're talking veterans in Chimera or outflanking. And the reason you want to do that is because if you foot slog your plasma up the board, there's a good chance your opponent will just kill it before it makes it. If you are, and that therefore you have wasted your expensive plasma weapon. Instead, your plasma guns want to be doing 
uh, want to be doing shock and awe damage. That's a good way of looking at it. shock and awe damage. Voodoo damage. You want to put the voodoo in the opponent. You want your plasma guns because you're paying a premium for them. You want to be getting the most out of them. And the best way to do that is to deliver a hammer blow. Scion command squads with four plasmas in uh, is 80 points. You take two of those and you take a scion uh, commander, a Tempesta Prime, with a command rod, and it's, 100, it's 205 points. That is a ball of death. You take just, just that one. Just take, just take that. You just drop down and you just plasma something to death. Veterans, two or three squads of veterans in Chimeras, with loaded up to the nines, plasma and plasma pistols, will, you know, can drive up to an objective, jump out and clear it. There's always exceptions to the rules. Obviously, there might be some extremely hard units, but we're talking about, we're talking generally, if you've got an enemy infantry unit or a collection of enemy units, 30 veterans with plasma and plasma uh, pistols, hell, even heavy flamers, which you can take into addition to your other special weapons. That's going to clear, that is going to clear, absolutely clear uh, an enemy objective, no doubt. So that's where you want to be utilizing your plasma. Now there are, you know, there are arguments to be made. You can you can put your uh, and this is and we're, we're speaking in generalizations. You know, obviously, if you want to go nuts, put plasma in your Cadian support uh, infantry squads. You know, plasma and an auto cannon. Yeah, sure, go for it. But we're speaking. Where are these weapons best used? What where where uh, do they find their niche? Plasma, you want, if you're paying a premium price point for it, you need to be getting the most damage out of it. And that's why you wanted to find some of getting it into rapid fire range. Veteran uh, command squads jumping out of the back of Chimera, uh, out of the back of Valkyries with four plasma guns. That's nasty. That's really, really nasty. Um, they're going to jump out and they're, gonna, they're going to get into rapid fire range. Easy peasy. It's expensive. Don't get me wrong. It's expensive, but uh, it does it does bring the pain. So I hope that makes sense to any of you. Uh, you know, guys that are starting out who are wondering where the, where where my special weapons are best utilized. Hope that uh, this video has answered some of those questions. If anyone else has got any cool plasma slash grenade launch tactics, please put it down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for listening, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.